living in an RV is a bit like being trapped in an elevator. How long do you think you can handle it with your spouse? Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you might live amazing or you might not if you're thinking about RVing as a couple, whether you're thinking of full time or for weekends, there are some challenges living as a couple in a small space, traveling and just dealing with all the ins and outs. So this video is really about whether or not it's going to be a good fit for you. We know that it's not a perfect fit for it's not even a good fit for for some people. Oh, that's right. So we met a couple that had a 43 foot class A. Remember yeah, that? big tag axle thing. It's a yeah, beautiful rig. It was beautiful. And he said the reason why it was so big is that he wanted to be as far away from his wife as possible. Yeah, they were doomed for failure right from the, from the start. And, and, as, and by the way, they were looking to sell it. it. Yeah, it didn't work for them. So we don't want you to go through all the trouble of, of buying an RV and finding out it's not right. So we thought of some things and we're also going to share a little bit about how we do this life as a couple mm -hmm. to kind of give you some some hints and and you know a little bit of things to think about think about you right now as a couple how well would you say paint the mailbox together you know i think that's a good example of are, are there anything left unsaid are there any kind of resentments can you paint the mailbox without having a fight right yeah can you do anything together without fighting can you cook together yeah right? can you cook together yeah, yeah. I mean, I do all the cooking. She doesn't do anything. So. <laughs> you do. We do. We do cook. Let's just have a fight right here on camera. Yeah. We do too. <laughs> I was cooking eggs with you and hash browns yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you did the eggs and I did the hash browns. Yeah, it, it was perfect. Yeah. I think it's really important to be able to work together as a team. So if you guys have ever rented a canoe together, you know, how did that work out for you as a couple? Yeah. Were you paddling against each other? Or, did I mean, you take direction? That's a big one. And then you also want to have activities that you like to do together, you yeah. know, and in our case, we love to bike and we do a lot of biking. That's our shared activity and the e-bikes make that very pleasant. We ride on average three times a week and our rides are usually 30 to 40 miles. So then what our non-compatible activities are is I love to hike and... I like car museums or car shows. But car museums right now, and we've done four in the last month. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been a lot. So I think... Not for, <laughs> not for, for me. <laughs> Questions to ask yourself is if your partner has an activity that you don't like, how are you going with them? Like when you go with me hiking, what's that like? When's this going to be over? And I'm like that in the museum, yeah. you know? And I think the key is not, you know, to kind of put that in your back pocket and know that you're there to support your, your spouse. Mm -hmm. I realize that it's an important part of our relationship and keeping the relationship solid. And When I was back living in a house, I had a hiking club and I could go with my friends or at the hiking club. So that's a question to ask you because can you do your activity by yourself sometimes or do you always have to drag your partner with you? When I had my sticks and bricks house, most of the time I would be going by myself. My friends from the car world would either be there or would, they would come and visit. So we'd hang out all day long. As we were coming across um, South Dakota, I found out that there's this museum in Murdo. It's called the Pioneer Auto Museum. and if you're ever in the area and you like cars, it's a must stop. And, and I went to that by myself. Yeah, you have to be okay to be able to do things alone. And this is, I think, the biggest shift for me living full-time RV life is that I lost my community. I had my yoga friends. I had my friends that I had lunch with. And, you know, I had women that I hung out with and, you know, all these groups that are not out here. And although I'm meeting people out here, a lot of things that I want to do, I mean, I have to do by myself or you are my social. You're my main social outlet. And I think that's what happens with couples, right? right? That was the hardest thing for me to give up was my, my car world. Almost all of my friends were in the car community. I would say that's going to be the biggest adjustment you have to deal with if you're going to do full time. But the good news in that is the longer we're out here, particularly with Thousand Trails, which is a network of campgrounds, we meet 
people we've met before over and over again. Yeah, you know? it's amazing how really small this community is because you do run into the same people in different states all the, all the time. You have to be open to meeting new people. And that was another thing for me, when I was, especially when I was solo. It was a little harder for me to meet new people. I mean, here I am at the time, 69-year-old, single male, and, you know, especially families, they see somebody like that and think, hmm. Dirty old man. What's, what's <laughs> up with that guy? <laughs> Much easier if you're a couple, I found. Well, let's talk about fights, because even if you're only camping on a weekend, it's possible to have fights. Mm -hmm. And if you're the kind of couple that just lets it all out and yells it out for 5 or 10 or 15 minutes, that would not go over really well in a campground. Um, you can definitely hear. I mean, when I'm outside and Paul runs the blender, he has a big blender, I can hear it outside. So I'm sure that if we were yelling, it could be <laughs> heard by the neighbors. Entertaining for the neighbors. <laughs> so how do we fight? <sighs> Here's the dirt. <laughs> I don't know. How do we fight? I mean, I feel like it's like we just, we may each say a sentence very loud. Yeah. But that's about it. Yeah, well, we I, don't, we're not real vocal, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're not, uh, we don't do a lot of screaming and yelling. I just, I just kind of shut down. Well, and that's the thing. All couples fight. So you need to have a way that you can do it that's healthy because you're in this little elevator, right? Mm -hmm. You're living in a small space. For us, it, it seems like, you know, we each will kind of go in our corners and I might take a walk, you might work on the truck or the RV, and then we come back. The biggest source of anxiety, um, which sometimes leads to arguments, is moving into a site. Backing up Backing the trailer. Up. There's actually, I've seen, we don't have one, I, we should get one. Um, there are t-shirts that say, I'm sorry for the things I said while backing into the site. That can be very stressful. You're trying not to back into a tree or a, a parked vehicle on the other side or you could hit a car parked in a, in a space on the other side of you. The reason why it's, you know, become a thing, you know, with t-shirts and everything is because it's true. It's because of, of how real it is. You know, mm -hmm. everybody is familiar with it. So go to a parking lot with, if you were new to camping, go to a parking lot and practice backing in, get some cones and just mark it and mm -hmm. practice communicating to each other. And I and think we could do that. That's something we have never done and, and I, I want to do that. Yeah, I do too. Well, yeah, we're going to actually take a, a driving course, um, which we'll, we'll be doing a video about, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky that Liz actually well, she was solo when I met her, so she had driven across country with a fifth wheel, so she is more than capable of driving the rig. So it's nice to be able to pull over and, and ask, you know, have her take over the driving duties. Yeah, if you don't know, we had an accident and messed up the back of the rig, and after that accident, I drove 100% of the time for a while, for, yeah, and then 50%, and I think I'm a little under 50% now, right, mm -hmm. would you say? I'd say. Yeah. yeah. And I think if you're a woman, and, and it's intimidating, no matter who you are, ma male or female, it's intimidating to drive a big rig, but push past fear, that's what we say in every video, push past fear because you do not want to learn how to drive one of these in an emergency. We recently heard a story of a lady who her husband was in the hospital and they were hundreds of miles away from home and she needed to get this big class a from the where it was parked near the hospital to their home because the husband had been told he could not drive right at all right, right. from that point on could right. not drive could not drive anymore so there she was trapped in the parking lot you know as well as sharing the driving i think sharing the camping tasks i mean so often it's the man who's doing the outside stuff and the woman does the inside well women i'm going to tell you a secret because i've done the whole thing since i've been solo the man has the easier job. He does, it's quicker and easier than, than doing the inside no, you're saying no. <laughs> you don't, you know, you're like, you're like, um, you're rooting for the men. You don't, yeah. you, you don't want the secret to be out. Yeah, Yeah. it's much harder outside. <laughs> yeah. he Come can, on guys, you back me up on this. He can do the outside in about 10 or 15 minutes, you know, roll up the patio mat, the power and the water hose, mm -hmm. in about 10 or 15. 
but women, you know, if you're doing the inside, you know that all the counters have to be cleared of stuff. You might have to move stuff. You've got to secure things. We have to secure chairs. We have to secure the shower doors, closet doors. There's a lot more. So even if you don't switch camping tasks, you at least need to know what the other person does. If you're having any doubts about RV life or if you're having any cracks or fissures in your relationship, RV life is not going to fix that. It's like it's only it's going to make it worse. Yes, yes, because you are on top of each other. It's a very intense. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get away from your relationship. I mean, you could live totally separate lives in a house. You really could. You know, one of you could be in the den or the garage. The other one of you in the other part of the house, and you may never even see or hear from each other all day long. Mm -hmm. Or you could go to the club or go out with your friends or whatever this life you're definitely more on top of each other one of the things that i think about our relationship is is pretty special is that we tend to be on the same page both short and long term like when we've had stressful situations if you watch this any time at all you know that we you know we we ripped our roof we had an incident at the gas station where we tore a corner off no and, we i yeah i took the back corner of the the uh, back corner of the rig off in a tail swing incident we jointly decide, well, we're, we're going to give up on this campsite. We can't get in it. And we jointly decide, you mm -hmm. know, how far or how long. He may turn to me two days before it's time to leave a campground and goes, you know, let's just get out of here now. And I'm like, oh, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, we are on the same page as far as uh, where we want to go and how long we want to spend there. And, and like you said, I mean, uh, we've left places early because uh, we're done. We're yeah. done. If you're thinking about doing this life and you're planning your itinerary, we know a couple. They were in California and they knew they wanted to get to Florida and she wanted to go across the top of the country and he wanted to go across the bottom. Mm -hmm. And we checked in with them a few months later and they still hadn't made a decision. They haven't left the West Coast yet. So that's something that you have to learn to work out as a couple is you know planning that itinerary, how far and how long you want to stay and what routes you want to take. We have not had a single disagreement no, about that. No. I mean, we might discuss, you know, do you want to spend some time in, in, in this state or in that state? But mostly it's just like, just tell me where we're going. Sometimes I, I don't pay attention until the day that we're leaving and I say, where are we going today? You know, <laughs> right. Well, I think I'm lucky in that he doesn't, he doesn't really care that much. I don't. So I get to make the decisions. I also do the work of, of and it is work to plan out an itinerary. I mean, I can sit for three or four hours in an afternoon. It, it is a lot of work to, to plan an itinerary. How far do you want to drive? Yeah. Where do you need to stop? Yeah. How far can you go? What about yeah. the temperatures of where you're going? What's available as far as RV campgrounds? You also want to have a, a shared vision about how long you're going to do this life. You know, is it is it a short-term thing? Is it you're going to do it for six months, or do you want to like we do? We just this is our life. This is our home. Um, we don't have a house to go back to, and don't want one right now. You certainly don't want to sell everything and find out you made a huge mistake. That's, that's, <laughs> we mentioned people in another video that had been out for three weeks, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they uh, they'd already sold everything, but they made a bonsai run across the top of the country from Florida we met them in Oregon you but can't enjoy this life if you're if you're moving every couple of days some of the stops they were at you know were at rest stops so they weren't able to you know open the awning get the patio mat out and just chill and look at the view usually there's plenty of things to do and keep you busy for at least two weeks Right, and you want to allow for days where you just feel like doing nothing and just sitting in a chair out on your patio or if the weather's bad and it's not good for exploring. Right, yeah. So for us, two weeks is fine. Now for you, five days may be fine, but that's something that you have to find out together as a couple. If you're not sure and you haven't done this lifestyle before, I think a good way to do it would be to, to rent an RV. And don't rent it for just a week. Rent it for a month or two and really see if this lifestyle fits your personality. Yeah, it's a very hands-on life. I guess there are people that, that do this life that are not handy, you know, that, that have somebody repair whatever breaks for them. They, they can't do it themselves or won't do it themselves. That was me. I had to make a phone call every time. I'm lucky that I was brought up by somebody who taught me a lot of those skills and, and then I did a job that required the, those skills. 
So I can fix pretty much anything. If you're that kind of person, this life is, you're, you're more suited for this life than somebody who, who has, to, has to hire somebody to do it for them. Right, because you may lose time if your camper has to go in the shop or you're waiting for service. It's a lot of aggravation, a lot of expense, which leads us into money. You do not want to be doing this life if money's really tight because you're going to need extra money. You know, we had a situation where our rig went into the shop and we had to find a place to stay and you had to fly home for your brother. Yeah, I had to fly from, we were in Spokane and I had to fly to Vegas a couple of times when my brother was, uh, was ill and then he passed away. You have to have money in the bank if you want to live this life comfortably. You know financial stress is really hard on a relationship. Another thing you you say goodbye to in this lifestyle is privacy in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, everybody in the rig knows what you're doing. Yeah. There's not like a soundproof door. Now, <laughs> Paul and I, you know, didn't date. You, if you know our story, you know Paul moved in to help me when I broke my hand. And, you know, that's something that you, you don't really, can't really talk about too much, but just know that there's no privacy in the bathroom. Right. Like I said, just... Say goodbye to that privacy. <laughs> so tell us in the comments, did we miss anything uh, that would be important for couples to know? Yeah, let us know. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time. Paul, are you still in the bathroom? Are you okay? What's taking you so long? <laughs>